and it was just very uncomfortable. Sorry, uh, yeah. uh, I just imagined this. Yes. Uh, uh, pardon my imagination <laughs> and my ignorance on about boat leaving. Have you ever thought of like, what if the boat capsized? So that's the thing, you know, before that we did our homework already. Uh, yeah. So we realized that, you know, with in a stormy condition, a boat is still able to sail. Alright? You probably will not be able to make too much way ahead in the uh, in in covering the distance that you want to reach your destination, but it is not supposed to capsize. Alright? Yeah. If you maneuver the boat properly, you are going to be quite safe. So there's a certain uh, direction that you have to point your boat towards so that you know whenever the waves come, you're actually cutting the waves. So if you allow the waves to hit you on the side, that's when the boat will roll over. Yeah, so you know, uh, Darren after learning all these things, you know, he assured me and then we spoke with sailors who have uh, met with, you know, really, really stormy conditions out there. We, we felt that, you know, we were ready to take it on. And I think thankfully, because of the homework that we did, so when we were really met with it, that gave us a confidence that you know we'll ride it through. But even then, I must tell you frankly, like, you know, back there when we were in that ship, yeah, yeah, I was praying. I was really praying. Like, okay, please don't let this be the last day, you know, on earth. Yeah. So because I, I believe, do you know how to? Uh, ride I the I boat? went through the lesson with uh, Darren, uh, but okay. he's definitely the the sailor. Yeah, yeah. So he must be in in Hawking, He must be very tired, You know, that means he must really be the one because all his family. Lives depend exactly. on him. I think you know because of the trust um, I have seen. Okay, or rather the, the trust that have uh, been built up, like you know, in our years of um, um, knowing him. You know, I know that he's a responsible person, and he will not take on anything that you know he is not comfortable with or he is not confident with. So, and I know that you know we are one whole family. You know, with him. So, um, if he says that he's confident and you know he thinks that he has that necessary skill set, then I want to give him the blessing to trust him. Yeah, and so we went and he proved himself. Yes, I, I believe so. You are all safe and sound. Yeah, we are sound still here. Right we are still now. here. Yes. 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 And one of the key things about sending children to school is about socializing, ah. getting to know friends. Yes. So, wouldn't you be afraid, like, uh, if they are homeschooled, they don't get to really interact with other people, it might affect their social skills? Mm. Yeah. That's why I went to have more children, you see, so they can interact in themselves. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but um, I think on the contrary, I think this is one of the uh, myths about homeschooling that a lot of people, um, you know, walk away with, thinking that in homeschooling our children, we are actually doing them a disservice because uh, they don't get a social life, uh, they do not know how to interact with their peers. On the contrary, because they homeschool and because we, um, you know, take them out to have different experiences in life, they actually do not just interact with their peers. Um, they interact with a, a, a variety of people um, from all walks of life, uh, from all ages. So, you know, <laughs> The most classic example I will quote you is uh, my third son, uh, or rather my number three, lah, huh? my second son. Okay, personality-wise, he's very outgoing, but he is not shy to speak to adults, you know, about anything and everything on his mind. So you have dark secrets revealed to strangers, uh, you know, just uh, in, after knowing them for like two minutes, you know. <laughs> yeah, so even for my uh, number two, my second child, all right, he is more reserved by nature. He's very quiet, yeah, but he can hold a conversation when he needs to. And I believe that has to do with the fact that uh, we just take them out, you know, and give them exposure to all kinds of things and all kinds of people. Yeah, so of course, you know, the natural default, his, his, um, his uh, modus operandi is, you know, if there's a new person, okay, I would prefer not to go there, you know, but because of the opportunities that's afforded to them, then they, 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 they are still able to make that connection with people and um, to, you know, yeah, speak. Yeah, and uh, relate to people. So I think social skills wise is not um, hindered in that sense. Yeah. I'm really thankful for the opportunity to have homeschooled my two uh, boys, two middle boys especially, because it was through homeschooling that I realized that, you know, it was a good fit for them in that they had a much slower time coming along in terms of reading because both of them are dyslexic. Yeah, so uh, because of the dyslexia, it actually caused them, okay, especially for my uh, elder boy, he is very precocious. So when it was revealed to him that, you know, he has a learning um, difficulty, challenge, you know, he took it quite hard. So for children who are, you know, a little bit more understanding of, you know, okay, the situation at stake, 
he was very upset. He said, no, why so unfair? Why is it going to be me? How old, how old was he when he know this? About P3. Oh. So he was about nine years old then. Right. Yeah. So you discover so, because certain things he didn't write yeah. properly and why is he always getting this so kind the of reversals? Error. The reversals are uh, evident, yes. all right, to start off with. And you know, it would be so difficult to get him to uh, recognize short vowel words from long vowel words. So like, mm -hmm. hat and hate, you know. Mm -hmm. He will always read hate as hat. It will never quite click so it's to do with their processing, their working memory and all that. Yeah, and um, so we, we sent him to uh, do a diagnosis and so the diagnosis came out that, you know, he's uh, higher functioning. He's actually quite high in terms of his IQ, but then it's just that it's going to be a problem because his brain is just not wired that way. Yeah, so it will take a bit longer time and because of homeschooling, we were able to afford him without, you know, him having to go to school and then, you know, having to bear that teasing from friends, maybe, you know, why are you still not reading and all that. Yeah, so because of that, um, uh, I was also held back um, in terms of starting out the younger one, so the youngest one. So I thought, you know, well, I think I should just focus on these two um, for the moment. And for the youngest one, he seems to be coming along fine, yeah. Uh, even though now I'm also seeing a little bit of the same pattern, but you know, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. And since I'm a lot more confident in handling his situation, I think I know how to give him the assurance that he needs in order not to feel like, um, why is it that you know, all his friends are able to read and then you know I'm not able to and all that, yeah. I think some of our parents over here watching this interview uh, may have this thought about homeschooling their children as well. Do you have any tips to share with them how to be, make it successful in uh, homeschooling? Okay, well, um, well, I, I'm not a veteran or you know, a very, very expert in this, okay? I only have four kids of my own and um, I'll just share with you my experience, yeah? Uh, now, as a homeschooling family, I think, you know, there are definitely certain things that you know that you have to give up, right? Because you're surviving on just one income. Yeah, uh, the other party being required to do all the managing of, you know, the studying, the schooling and, and all that, uh, taking up, uh, looking after the children full time. Yeah, so that was something that you have to be prepared for. Yeah, uh, a loss of income. And then also, I think, you know, um, there's also that consideration that you have to ask yourself, you know, what you're doing homeschooling for. Yeah, so for us, it was really a um, desire to understand our children and to give them the kind of education that, uh, that they need. You know, let it be interest-led, uh, that they can take on projects, you know, or uh, let them pursue what really enthralls them and what, you know, excites them. Yeah, so that was where we were coming from. We thought, you know, we wanted to just give them the opportunity to see the world and then find out for themselves what they really want out of it. Yeah, so uh, I suppose um, apart from a loss of income, I think there's also other things that you have to consider. One important thing I felt uh, that all homeschooling parents should have in mind, especially in Singapore, yeah. all right? The academics, yeah, the paper qualification is something that you know you need to learn also how to balance. There is a PSLE that we have to grapple with, right? Okay, yeah, how are you going to um, manage it in such a way that you will still be able to meet the state requirements uh, at the same time, your own agenda for your children's education? Yeah, so that balance there. So in our case, I think, you know, our daughter, um, not having been met with any learning challenges, she did a much better job sailing through PSLE than uh, my, my first son, yeah, my second child. Uh, so he had a little bit more uh, of a tougher time. Yeah, he passed his PSLE, but because also, you know, in Singapore, as homeschoolers, we have a higher benchmark to meet, so he had to actually retake his PSLE again because he didn't meet the homeschooler benchmark. Yeah, so that was another shocker for him. He's like, no, but I passed what? Like, you know, if I were in school, I would have just made it, right? I said, yeah, but you know, unfortunately, we, we took this route, right? And so, you know, we have to play by the rules of the games. Yeah, so, you know, that, and then COVID struck and all that. So it was really quite a bit of a challenge, yeah. Um, but looking back, I would still look at it and say that, you know, I'm glad that we walked him through the toughest period of his time. And that is also how I think, you know, um, I look back and I think about my own uh, progression as a student. All this while, you know, I've never been met with any setbacks in life. You know, so when setback comes, actually, I'm not very comfortable with failures. Yeah. So I told my son point blank in his face, I say, you know, actually, I'm so glad that this thing happened because you cannot walk through life thinking that um, you're not going to be met with failures. So I'm glad that this came early and you're not even a failure because you passed, correct? Not. But it's just that you didn't meet somebody's expectation. Yeah, but what are you going to do with it? 
Are you going to face it squarely in the face and give your best? Or are you going to just whine and complain and all that? And I think that was a lesson for him. Yeah, a, life, a huge life lesson. And that only came about because, you know, we, we went through um, homeschooling and, you know, guiding him, walking him through. Yeah. So I think he, he grew up becoming more mature. Yeah. And um, more understanding of what exactly we want out of this whole experience for them. Yeah. And that I'm thankful for. So really, um, some tips if I were to summarise first, definitely in terms of the purpose yes. of uh, homeschooling. So parents, if you want to go to this route, make sure you are very clear how you want to educate your children. And every child, they are unique. We cannot compare the first one with the second one and with the third one, each and every one of them. If we believe that they are unique on their own, they definitely have their talents of their own, you know, just grow accordingly and yes. we tailor made the uh, customized the education system for them. I think yeah. the purpose is really important. That's yeah, right. and you adjust accordingly. Yeah, so I think homes homeschooling parents really need to be highly adjustable according to the how they learn, you know, what is the best methodology to get them through. Yeah. Uh, especially uh, as homeschooling parents, probably like hear hearing from uh, Evelyn is about juggling between the system versus tailoring to their needs. That's right. Yeah? yeah. And of course, the third part would be finances. <laughs> and this is a major part, right? Because in order to homeschool, really, both parents, one of you definitely need to stop work to focus on their education. You're going to be out of job for that period of that whole year. We were actually planning for the whole year. You know, Darren, uh, once in an uh, interview, quoted that, you know, we actually needed about 100k to sustain the 100k you know oh what do we do so we have to save right